In this video, we will review how to find the key characteristics of a quadratic function given the equation and also graph the function. We are given y equals x squared minus 6x. Let's first find the values of a, b, and c with the equation in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. a, the coefficient of x squared is one. b, the coefficient of x is negative six. And because there is no constant term, c is zero. Number one, we're asked to determine whether the parabola opens up or down. If a is positive, the parabola opens up. If a is negative, the parabola opens down. a is positive one, and therefore the parabola opens up. Next, we're asked to determine the vertex, where the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b divided by two a, and the corresponding y value or function value is determined by substituting negative b divided by two a into the equation for x. So let's first find the x coordinate. By substituting negative six for b and one for a. This gives us the opposite or negative negative six divided by two times one, which simplifies the positive six divided by positive two which is equal to three. So we now know the x-coordinate of the vertex is positive three. To find the corresponding y-coordinate, we substitute three for x into the equation. This gives us y equals the square of three minus six times three, which is equal to nine minus 18, which is negative nine. We now know the vertex is the ordered pair three comma negative nine. Next, we're asked to determine the vertical or y-intercept. Every point on the vertical axis has an x-coordinate of zero, which is why we set x equal to zero to find the vertical or y-intercept. So if we set x equal to zero, we have y equals the square of zero minus six times zero, which gives us y equals zero. And the vertical intercept is a point which we must give as an ordered pair. x is zero and y is zero, and therefore the ordered pair is zero comma zero, which is the origin. Next, we're asked to state the horizontal or x-intercepts. Every point on the horizontal axis has a y-coordinate or function value of zero, which means to find the horizontal or x-intercepts, we set y equal to zero and solve for x. Setting y to zero, we have zero equals x squared minus six x. Let's solve by factoring. The first step in factoring is to factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case would be x. If we factor out x, we're left with the quantity x minus six. x times x minus six is equal to zero when x equals zero, or when x minus six is equal to zero, which gives us x equals six. Again, the horizontal or x-intercepts are points. The ordered pairs for the x-intercepts are zero comma zero, and six comma zero. Again, we know the y-coordinate is zero because these points are on the horizontal axis or because we set y equal to zero to find the horizontal or x-intercepts. Next, we want the equation of the axis of symmetry, which is x equals negative b divided by two a, but negative b divided by two a is also the x-coordinate of the vertex, which is positive three, and therefore the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals three. And now we're asked to graph the parabola. Let's first plot the vertex. The vertex is three comma negative nine, which is here. And next, let's sketch the axis of symmetry, which is the vertical line passing through the vertex, which is here. We know the parabola opens up. Let's plot the vertical or y-intercept next, which is the origin, zero comma zero, which is here. Notice how this point is three units to the left of the axis of symmetry, which means it must also be a point three units to the right of the axis of symmetry, which would be here, which is six comma zero. And notice how because this point is on the horizontal or x-axis, it is also listed as one of the horizontal or x-intercepts. Well, now let's graph the parabola. Number seven asks for the domain. The domain is a set of all possible inputs or x values. For any quadratic function, the input can be any real number, and therefore the domain is all reals. 
we're looking at the graph because the graph moves left and right forever without any holes or breaks. The domain is all reals, which using interval notation is the open interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is a set of all possible outputs or y values. Looking at the graph, notice how the lowest point on the graph is when y equals negative nine, and then from here, the graph moves up forever, approaching positive infinity, and therefore the range is from negative nine to infinity, including negative nine. Using interval notation, we have negative nine comma infinity. Because we include negative nine, we have a bracket to the left, and because we have infinity to the right, we have a parenthesis to the right. We could also say y is greater than or equal to negative nine. I hope you found this helpful.